Stress makes you stupid, but how does that work? Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Eck Berg with Wellness for Life, and if you'd like to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So most people have probably noticed at some point in their life that when they're stressed, they just don't perform the way they usually do. Some examples would be if you freeze up because someone's really rude to you and you're just steaming with fury and you just wish that you could tell them off just the right way but nothing comes to mind. And then an hour later you think of all those clever things that you should have told them, right? Uh, or if you are nervous, if let's say you're afraid of public speaking, you're really uncomfortable and you get up there and you feel like a deer in the headlight and you just freeze, you're tongue-tied, can't think of a single thing to say. So in both of those cases, it's a form of stress that makes you stupid. Your body changes priorities in those cases. So what's happening is stress is the same thing as a fight-flight activation of your nervous system. Your nervous system has two branches. It's called the sympathetic fight-flight or the feed breed which is parasympathetic and whenever you have stress you're activating that sympathetic or the fight-flight portion and then something happens in the body so this is a an old response that's in place in your body so that you can survive emergencies so if an animal comes to to eat you uh, whether it's a saber-toothed tiger or a grizzly bear or a Mack truck in modern day you got to be able to act quickly and your body reprioritizes and in those moments your heart rate increases your blood pressure increases your muscle tension increases you can quickly act and get out of there so let's look at the brain and how that all fits together so the frontal lobe of the brain is where your cognitive function the things that make us uniquely human are intellect, our ability for abstract thought, our ability to be discerning, our ability for motivation and planning, to staying focused. All of those are functions of the frontal lobe. So during a fight-flight response, when there's a truck coming at you, you don't have to be creative. You don't have to analyze a bunch of stuff. You just have to get out of the way. So you don't really need the frontal lobe, you just need instincts, you need basic pre-programmed responses, if you will. And those are taken care of for you by your brainstem. There's three portions to the brainstem. It's the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla. And all these, they regulate your autonomic nervous system. They manage things for you so you don't have to think. So this is where instinct sits. This is where instinct comes from, so that you're able to raise your blood pressure, tighten your muscles, and get out of the way quickly because you don't have time to analyze a bunch of stuff. So what happens in a stressful situation is your body reprioritizes. It says, in this moment, we don't need to be really clever and thoughtful and analytical. We just need to act. So the blood is reprioritized. The blood flow is what carries the oxygen and the resources for the brain to do what it does. So it says we don't need this right now, so it reduces the blood flow to the frontal lobe, to the thinking portion, and it increases the blood flow to the brain stem so that we can act quickly. So that's great when it's a wild animal, but it's not so great if we get stressed in other situations where we'd like to be functional. But there's a fine line also because sometimes if we're really, really relaxed and lethargic almost, we don't really perform that well. So there is a different scale of, of brain frequencies. And when we freeze, when we sort of get tongue-tied, then we're in high beta. We're trying to get something done. It's kind of frantic, but nothing's happening. That, that's indicative of high beta. In beta and SMR is when we perform the best. This is when we have to do some action. We have to interact, we have to talk, 
like what I'm doing now is primarily in beta and SMR. I'm not really nervous, but I'm focused trying to get the message across. I can't be lethargic. And if you're having a speech, if you're in a business meeting, you want to be calm and confident and productive. And this is in beta and SMR. So a little bit of nervousness, a little bit of sympathetic drive can be a plus. It can make you perform better. But then there is the other end of the spectrum where we have creativity and insight. If you've been mulling over a problem and then in the morning when you wake up or at night when you fall asleep or when you're just sort of shifting out of dream state, then it just comes to you. That's insight, that's spontaneous insight. And most creative people, most innovators, most scientists, they can attest to the fact that most insight comes in a state where you're not really paying attention, where you're really, really relaxed, almost drowsy, almost just coming out of, of sleep. And that's right between theta and alpha. Those are slower frequencies. Alpha is associated with relaxed learning and meditation. Theta is associated with shifting into dream state. So in these frequencies, when the sympathetic is completely offline or virtually completely offline, that's when we have these creativities and insights. High stress, we tend to freeze and get nothing done. A little bit of stress, we tend to perform the best, but true creativity and insight, which again is associated with frontal lobe, comes when we are the most relaxed. So that's why stress makes you stupid, because stress reprioritizes. It says thinking isn't really important when you have too much to act on in this moment. Please share this video with many people as you can, because this information is about having quality of life and avoiding diseases and unnecessary suffering. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so that we can keep this content coming your way. And if you have any questions or comments, make sure that you uh, let me know below and I'll be happy to try to answer those or even make more videos if there's some other topics that you'd like to have more information on. So for today, thanks for listening.